Congratulations. Is that the biggest win of your career? Oh, without a doubt, yes. Um, everyone will leave me as a great, great fighter. Um, and he was the former champion. And you know, to beat him, you know, that's a big, big feather in my cap. But to finish him, that's even the better. And um, without a doubt, I should get the next fight for the, for the world title. So I don't see how I shouldn't. Yeah, I want to ask you about that because you dominated him the first two rounds. The fact that you finished him, does that just rubber stamp everything? It, it leaves no doubt that you should you know, get the next shot because you finished yeah. him. Yeah, with, with, without a doubt. I've always said I don't go into fights just to win on points and maybe coast it. I go to finish all, all the time. Um, sometimes I might be my downfall, but I'll go to finish. And yeah, um, I knew I could finish him, which I did in the third. Um, it was only a matter of time. So without a doubt, I should, I should be getting that world title fight. Scott, he suggested, he, he suggested, but he didn't he confirm for definite, I think. Okay. The takedown seemed to be the deciding factor in each of the three rounds. Is yeah. that how you expected it to play out? Yeah, um, me, me and my coaches, you know, we knew my ground, seriously, is, is the best. Um, Funny enough, my coach Neil says I'm the strongest tour fiver in the world. <coughs> in the world, is it? You say in the world or? You're the strongest tour fiver. <laughs> <laughs> so the strongest tour fiver. Anyway, um, and yeah, I, I, I believe myself. I know my ground game is, you know, is is good and good enough to beat a lot of people. So um, I knew that was the key to beating him. You know, his, his striking's good and his ground's good, but I knew my, my ground pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, was going to be the key to, to finishing him. Can you go back to, um, you know, because it's an important kind of news point really for all of us that if Scott is hesitating about you not fighting for the title, is that kind of a bit of a disgrace in your view? Um, yeah, I don't know well, if that's too strong a word, but you know, maybe it isn't actually. Well, I'm, I won't be happy about it, but you know, obviously we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to chat because I, I feel like I've, you know, what else can I do? I beat two former world champions and a, and a UFC veteran in Francis. He's retired now, and you know, I don't want to be the same when I retired him, but I was his last fight and he's retired. So that's three big wins, and this win I just beat a former world champion and I finished him. So I don't see why I shouldn't get that world title fight, you know, next. But as I said, we'll have to talk and see, see what he's got for me next. You know, if it's a, a big fight or something, that makes sense, there may be, but I would. I think I, I should get the world title fight next, 100%. Obviously, obviously you and uh, Liam were friends yeah. heading into the fight. What was said after? Sorry? What, what was said after between oh, you two? Oh, he said I was a fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he said, he goes, you fat bastard. Yeah. And I just said, obviously, you know, um, I think I said good fight, and I can't really remember anything else other than that, but that also that was said. You're gonna buy him a beer, as you said you would afterwards? Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a man of my words. Yeah. As, as I said, I keep, I keep to my word, you know. Um, I said I'd, I'd win, which I did, so now we are buying the beer, you know. What was it's, it's still my friend, no, no hard feelings. It's, it's the fight game, someone had to win, someone had to lose. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll still buy my beer. What was it like to fight out there in front of that London crowd for you? It was great, it was great. Um, the, the weird thing was, sometimes I, I get more nervous when I'm in there. This time I wasn't. I don't know, I felt, maybe I felt like I was more at home. Um, I was probably more nervous in the locker room, but when I came out, I was cool. And yeah, you know, I think maybe his three jabs woke me up. And then that's when I thought, right, we're definitely in a fight now. Are you going to try and make it out to the MSG card so you can you know, be a physical presence there? Yeah, I'm there. there. I'm, I'm, I've, already, I've already set up. Okay. I've already set up. I'm, I'm going to be there in person, yeah. You're going to be stepping in there and talking to them? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I'll be in there. I'll be in there like squaring them off. I'm going to be the referee. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, a special guest. I know, you know, the, end, the end point, of course, is you know that championship belt. But tonight was kind of the culmination of another narrative because two years ago, you and Liam sat next to each other in the British Invasion press conference as Bellator launched this, you know, what we have here today, the, the real British contingency of the promotion to co-main event this card in, yeah. in front of a, you know, a raucous crowd here. Do you genuinely feel that it was a culmination of you know, a massive story, not only for you, but for a group of Brits who have done a lot for this promotion and a lot for UK MMA? Oh yeah, it, it definitely was a build up um, to, the, to the story now, to us actually fighting. Because um, leading into this, I always knew I was going to face Liam at some point, especially when he won the world title. He was unbeaten, 
Um, he was on the tear up, winning, and I felt like I was probably maybe one fight away from fighting him all, all the time. Um, so yeah, unfortunately it wasn't for the belt, but yeah, it was only a matter of time. And I, I could probably see uh, Liam and myself I, too again, some, some point further down the line, you know. But yeah, it, it was definitely a fight that had to happen. Where were you when this whole daily MVP pandemonium situation went down? Do you I, know was, about I was in my changing room. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't even know it happened until about 10 minutes ago. What do you think of something like that happening? You know, there's fans there, there's crowd and there's security issue. Yeah. Is it just part of the game to promote um, fight or what do you think about that? You know, everyone's different, yeah. As long as no one got hurt, but it's, it, you know, it is what it is. You know. Just to finish off, I say. <laughs> just to finish off, where, where did you kind of put that performance in terms of your, your total career? For me? Yeah. Oh, at the, at the top. At the top, yeah, definitely. Because I finished him. Um, yeah, out of, out of all my fights, I'd say this fight was, was my best. You know, as I said, I finished the former world champion. I can't say any more. But one last question. Uh, yeah. Some people thought that, that uh, Liam was going to give you trouble off of his back with, his, you, know, with you know, his great jujitsu. Um, and you really made him look helpless. Did it feel like that, that, like that in the cage to you? I, w I wouldn't say helpless, but that that is my game. Like, um, I don't know how no one's actually seen it in all my fights. That's what I do. I, I finish people, and um, in, in all my fights, if I haven't finished them, like I've, I've probably lost. But I've won a lot more. I've, like, I've won like eighteen now. Lost five. Um, so I say sometimes it could be a good thing, sometimes it could be a bad thing, but I always put that pressure on. I'm a pressure fighter and um, I've got a real good high um, win, win percentage in, in submissions or TKOs. So for me, I knew I could do that regardless anyway, even though he's, he has got good jiu-jitsu, good ground, I, I knew I had the remedy to stop that, stop his legs. Um, get top mount and you know work work for a submission at some point or for TKOs. All right, thank you guys. Thanks thank you, Thank you very much.